<laughs> okay, so those are my feminist glasses. I do wear glasses in real life, but to tell you the truth, most of the time I'm too vain to put them on. I'd rather bump into someone than to put on my glasses. But those feminist glasses, I always wear them. They've actually become part of my eyes, so I don't need to put them on anymore. Why are those glasses pink, you might ask? Well, first, because I like the color, I really do. And secondly, our social reality is sometimes so depressingly gray, it's nice to add a splash of color to it. I often get asked, where did you get those fancy feminist glasses? Actually, that's not true. Nobody ever asked me that. Most of the time, people will tell me that they think they're ugly, they're hideous, and they wouldn't be caught dead wearing them. Well, it's obviously not about the glasses, but about feminism. Gosh, a lot of people really hate feminism. Feminism has become a dirty word. And I mean, you could try to do a Taylor Swift and just shake the haters off. But let me tell you that whenever you speak out on gender issues or feminist issues, or even come out yourself as a feminist, be prepared to get some nasty reactions. First, there are the people who really don't want to change the status quo. Spoiler, those people are most often older white men. And then there are the people who might think you're just a little uptight and you take, take things too seriously. Some time ago, I was at a friend's party. The ambience was great, everybody was drinking and snacking on things like Haribo wine gums and nuts. And I was talking to a friend when another young woman joined us. And somehow we must have touched upon the issue of gender equality or inequality, because this young woman turned to me and she said, accusingly, you're a feminist, so does that mean you don't want men to hold the door open for you? Well, obviously, there are a lot of ideas about what feminism is or what feminists do or don't do. Or as my ex-boyfriend remarked when I was cooking dinner for him, don't worry, I won't tell your feminist friends. So for him, cooking was an unfeminist act, and you can imagine why this relationship didn't work out. <laughs> Funny enough, for a long time I was very naive, and I didn't realize that not everybody was as into feminism as I was, because for me, feminism was the best thing that has ever happened to me. And I have to thank Simone de Beauvoir for that. Yes, that's right. A French writer and philosopher who has been dead now for 30 years inspired me to become a feminist. I mean, maybe I'm not that interested in people being alive. I don't know. And sometimes I wish I had another story to tell, a story in which I became a feminist because of what I experienced. And believe me, there were a lot of small episodes, small incidents where I felt that something was wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. There was a sports teacher in school who told the whole class when I was maybe 12 years old, Julia is doing push-ups as good as a boy. At that time, I didn't understand why this compliment felt so strange. There was another teacher, a, sci a social science teacher, who announced to me, a career? Don't think about it. You better get some children. There were the girls at the school yet who were talking about another girl who, at age 15, already had had sex with different boys. She's a slut, they said, and I wondered why nobody was saying those kind of things about the boy she was sleeping with. There were all those small episodes, but I didn't figure them out until I read Simone Beauvoir when I was 18. And suddenly, things started to fall into place. Suddenly, things I didn't understand before now made sense. It's like when you're brooding over a problem all day long, looking for a solution, and then after a good night's sleep, you wake up and you have it all figured out. You have your solution. There's this famous quotation by Simone de Beauvoir, one is not born, but rather becomes a woman. You could also say, one is not born, but rather becomes a feminist. I became a feminist because of Simone de Beauvoir. I read her feminist masterpiece, The Second Sex, and I wanted to become just like her. Simone de Beauvoir was a feminist, well then I would become one too. It was really that easy. Little did I know at that time that when The Second Sex was published in 1949, Simone de Beauvoir didn't consider herself a feminist. Simone de Beauvoir became a feminist when she was well over 60, when, in the 1970s, young French feminists asked her to join the women's movement. So when I discovered this, I was at first disappointed. I mean, I became a feminist because of Simone de Beauvoir. Now it turned out this woman didn't even consider herself a feminist for most of her life. I mean, what a bummer. There goes my inspiring story. But now this fact gives me hope, because if someone like Simone de Beauvoir, who saw herself as the exceptional woman, a woman who can achieve everything she sets her mind to, 
If such a person can become a feminist, so can you. You too can put on your feminist glasses. But how do we do this? How do we get other people to put on their feminist glasses? Because trust me, it's not as easy as it sounds. Because as I already told you, a lot of people are not that eager to get into contact with feminism. An astonishing number of people seems to believe that feminists are bad-tempered, angry bitches who don't even know how to dress nicely. And let me tell you what, yes, I'm angry a lot. I mean, I have every reason to be, every day. It doesn't matter if it's on the subway, in the newspaper, on TV, on the internet. Every day I see hundreds of reasons to get angry. And I'm always surprised to learn that other people don't see them, or they see them differently, or they simply don't care. I mean, a half-naked woman advertising new vacuum cleaner? Why not? Sex sells. A woman who was raped because she wore a short skirt? Well, if she didn't want to have men's attention, she should have put on some pants. The fact that all the leading articles in the newspaper are written by men? Ah, come on, the female journalists just aren't as good as their male colleagues. I think you get the point, but a lot of people don't. I really had a hard time accepting the fact that not all people see the things the same way I do. Just because something is obvious to me, it doesn't have to be obvious to others. Take my younger sister Johanna, for example. She's one of the smartest persons I know. Johanna can tell you everything about the Bronte sisters, which computer games are awesome, or how mail order catalogs have shaped German fashion culture after the Second World War. She's also an amazing cook. So in a nutshell, my sister is really a genius. But for a long time, she wasn't that interested in feminist or gender issues, which was funny because a lot of the things she did or read or watched or liked to talk about had a feminist vibe to them. But this never occurred to her, it wasn't obvious. Until the day when Johanna had a light bulb moment. You have to know that she studied a very exotic subject, cultural anthropology of textiles. Yeah, I still have no clue what it's all about, but the important thing to know about the subject is only very few men study it. It's over 90% women. But when you look at the executive positions in the field, that is, institutes doing research in this area or museums with a focus on textiles, all these, or nearly all these, positions are occupied by men. When my sister discovered this, she was shocked. And she told me, I don't get it. Only women are doing my degree program, so how can it be that all the important positions are occupied by men? And I was surprised that she was so surprised, because until then I didn't even know she realized those kind of things. And then she said, you know, you always say I should put on my feminist glasses, and I did. I put on my feminist glasses, and then I saw what was wrong. People get interested in something when they feel affected by it. But when it comes to feminism, I often get to hear, why should that affect me? I mean, not everybody has a light bulb moment like my sister. I mean, I would like to hand out those light bulb moment, moments, but that's not a possibility, so I have to try to create them. And here's the thing. Feminism should affect you because gender norms affect all of us. Gender norms tell us how we should be and what is expected from us. Gender norms tell us which kind of behavior will be accepted and which kind of behavior will be punished. Some time ago, I was in Paris visiting some friends, and one evening I was walking through Belleville with one of my friends and her little son Niels, who was one and a half years old at that time. We were on our way to party, and then a man joined us. He started talking to little Niels, bending down at his side, and I thought, ah, this is so delightful, Paris, the city where strangers come up and talk so nicely to little children. I mean, really charming. And then I heard what the man was saying. He was telling Niels to walk more like a man. He said, you walk like a girl. I could just stare at him because I couldn't believe my ears. I mean, this boy was one and a half years old and already a stranger felt entitled to voice his opinion on this boy's behavior, to tell him to man up. If girls are too loud, they get reprimanded. It's not girly to be loud. If boys are shy, they are told to man up. If a woman is ambitious, she's called unlikable and bossy. If a man is ambitious, he's admired and, well, seen like the boss. If he's not, he doesn't have what it takes to be a leader. My grandma told me that she doesn't like Hillary Clinton because Hillary Clinton is too ambitious. And I told her, 
Grandma, you don't become president of the United States if you're not ambitious. I mean, she would never say something like that about a male politician, and trust me, she really hates Donald Trump. So, that was strange. Gender norms are often deeply ingrained into our culture, and they're surprisingly consistent, because they seem normal to us. If we see something on a regular basis, over and over again, we do consider it to be normal. Putting on your feminist glasses means seeing behind the so-called normality. Feminism is about freedom from gender norms. Ultimately, feminism is about creating a better world for all of us. Who needs feminism anymore? The truth is, I do and so do you. Because without it, we will never be able to overturn the gender norms which are holding us down and the sexism they bring with them. We will never be able to live in a world where we're allowed to just be. But how do we do this? How do we create a more equal world? It's a question I get asked a lot, and let me tell you, putting on your feminist glasses is a necessary first step, but it's not enough. The real work begins after that. Now that you see, you have to act. But how? I'm a journalist, and one of the things I like the most about my job is that I get to meet a lot of interesting people, and I get to ask them a lot of questions. That's basically my hobby, asking questions. And some time ago, I did an interview with a woman called Miriam. Miriam is a German theater director and performance artist, and gender plays a huge role in her work. And Miriam is not only very cool, but also a very wise woman. She told me, you know, Julia, feminism is like dusting off. Everybody hates dusting off. I mean, the room looks clean. But if you don't dust off the cupboards and the shelves regularly, the dirt will start to pile up. And then someday you realize it's really dirty. I was fascinated because Miriam provided me with something I didn't have the words to express. How do we achieve gender equality? By keeping up with the dirt, by not falling off. And it's easy to fall off sometimes, to think, I dust off that shelf tomorrow. No, seriously, do it now. When we talk about feminism, we often talk about the big picture. But the truth is, it's also the small acts that count the small feminist acts in your daily life. Someone is telling a sexist joke and you decide not to laugh at it, but to call the joke tell out, that's a feminist act. You're at an event and you realize there are nearly just male speakers and very little women, and you decide to point that out to the organizers, that's a feminist act. Basically, every time we notice that something is off and we don't just look away, but speak up, that's a feminist act. Don't underestimate the power of daily choices and personal experience, because the private is political, indeed. I studied in France as part of a French-German double diploma, and at my university in France, there was a class for us Germans where we were supposed to learn the French language even better. And at the beginning of the term, uh, the lecturer distributed a sheet with different authors on it and different subjects, because the aim was to do like a tour to 200 years of French history via literature. Very ambitious. And so every one of us had to choose one author and to do a presentation on this author. And I scanned the list and I was irritated. After class, I went to the lecturer and I told him, Monsieur, there's not one single woman on this list. I mean, come on, 200 years of French history without one single woman, is it even possible? And he seemed embarrassed, because obviously he didn't decide on purpose to not put a woman on the list, he just forgot. So I proposed to do a presentation on a woman, and it's easy for you to guess who it was. Yes, it was Simone Beauvoir. And after my presentation, I got a very good grade. Maybe because the lecturer did feel guilty a little bit, I don't know. But what I know is that Simone Beauvoir remained the only female writer who was presented in this class. Could the other students also have suggested female writers they found interesting? Of course they could have, but they didn't. Because too often, we just accept the status quo and we don't question it. Wipe the dust away right now. Be a good cleaner. Be a feminist cleaner. I mean, we should all be feminist cleaners, because I don't do not only believe in the power of seeing, I also believe in the power of identification. Some time ago, a woman in her 30s told me that she doesn't consider herself a feminist. She told me, I would consider myself to be an emancipated woman, but for me, calling herself a feminist means 
that you have to act upon that, that you well, have to be active. And she was afraid that if she started calling herself a feminist, people would expect certain actions from her. And I think she's right. But for me, this isn't something negative. I call myself a feminist because I have an agenda. I think that calling yourself a feminist doesn't only mean you, mean you believe in the social, economic and political equality of the sexes. It also means you want to act on that. You want to change the status quo. Because equality isn't given to us. It's not handed to you like the piece of sample cheese in your local supermarket. Equality has to be fought for. It is earned, not given. In history, things never change because someone politely asked for them to change. I mean, imagine the suffragettes just asking politely pl to please give women the vote. I mean, we wouldn't have the women's vote today if that were the case. The annoying thing is, we do not only have to fight for the rights we'd like to obtain, we also have to fight for the rights we already have. We have to fight to keep them. Because rights which have already been achieved can be taken away again. Just ask women in the US or Poland about getting an abortion. I see wo the world through feminist glasses. That doesn't mean I'm completely free from the demands of the gender norms surrounding us. It's a daily struggle for me to define myself as a person, not only as a woman. But putting on my feminist glasses helps me see through all the bullshit about how we should be. Feminism is in fact the best bullshit detector I know. So often we are told that we are the problem, that we've done something wrong, that we are too much of this or too little of that, when in reality it's a structural problem in our societies. Seeing clearly means first seeing all the dirt, but it also means seeing how to get rid of it and how to build, small step by small step, a more equal society. So let's put on our feminist glasses and get going. Thank you.